besides these, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is another su superior energy of mind which comprises the living entities for exploiting the resources of this material, inferior nature. Should I read the purport? Purport. Here it is clearly mentioned that the living entities belong to the superior nature or energy of the Supreme Lord. The inferior energy is matter manifested in different elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. <clears throat> All forms of material nature, namely gross, earth, etc., and settled mind, etc., are pr products of the inferior energy. The living entities who are exploiting these inferior energies for different purposes are the superior energy of the Supreme Lord. And it is due to this energy that the entire material world functions. The cosmic manifestation has no power to act unless it is moved by the superior energy, the living entity. Energies are always controlled by the energetic, and therefore the living entities are always controlled by the Lord, and they have no independent existence. They are never equally powerful as unintelligent men think. The distinction between the living entities and the Lord is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, as follows. O Supreme Eternal, if the embodied living entities were eternal and all-pervading like you, then they would not be under your control. But if the living entities are accepted as minute energies of your Lordship, then they are at once subject to your supreme control. Therefore, real liberation entails surrender by the living entities to your control, and that surrender will make them happy. In that constitutional position only can they be controllers. Therefore, men with limited knowledge who advocate the monistic theory that God and the living entities are equal in all respects are actually guided by a faulty and polluted opinion." Unquote. The Supreme Lord Krishna is the only controller and all living entities are controlled by Him. These living entities are His superior energy because the quality of their existence is one and the same with the Supreme, but they are never equal to the Lord in quantity of power while exploiting the gross and subtle inferior energy, matter, the superior energy, the living entity, forgets his real spiritual mind and intelligence. This forgetfulness is due to the influence of matter upon the living entity. But when the living entity becomes free from the influence of the illusory material energy, he attains a stage called mukti, or liberation. The false ego under the influence of material illusion thinks, I am matter. A material acquisition contamination, it becomes fully Krishna conscious or liberated. Oh, Lars. Besides these, Almighty Armed Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mind which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material, inferior nature. Yeah. Besides this, besides this means previous was yes. the material elements. The one was on the flag about Aparapati, inferior nature. Mumira Ponovayu Kamana Dereva Sa. Besides this, there is a superior nature, superior property. He says that this was, that is Jiva Bhūpaṁ Mahāvāho Daya Yidhu Dharjati Jagat. Third superior energy, is Jiva, living entities. Jiva, the living entities, are said to be marginal potencies or energies of the law. Hmm? Marginal means Jiva's, uh, there, are, there is thoughts of two energies in Jiva's, para and apara superior and inferior. Inferior energy is the material nature that is described. 
and for our superior nature is that is in transcendental world manifested in transcendental world that is a internal potency of the lord that is para subriya jeevas also are included into para subriya but they are tapastha they are marginal who oh, that means in jeevas in the living entities these two energies para and para inferior and superior are there then stand in jeevas that means jeevas of access either of the energies either they may live under a para prakriti inferior energy or para prakriti superior energy jeevas of minute independence who oh, krishna has given them out of mercy karma smarsi karuna yadattam who oh. so they have this minute independence because these jeevas are minute very very minute who oh. so their independence is also minute who oh. but if they can utilize their minor independence properly they will be in their constitutional condition that means they will be under para prakriti because they belong to para prakriti but if they abuse their independence minor independence they will be under para prakriti you understand inferior nature that is the material nature of maya shakti hmm. and thereby they will forget their own identity that they are subriya nature hmm. and their own identity constitutional position and the thing that they are master of this material world and they acquire some material possessions in the view to enjoy them and they say that these are mine eh these are mine but in actuality they are krishnas they belong to krishna and krishna is the sole proprietor and only proprietor of the manifested world and unmanifested world of material world and spiritual world sarvaloka maheshwara the state has been called it as sarvaloka maheshwara he is the maheshwara master of all planets both material and spiritual so everything belongs to him Hmm. Is someone else there? Hmm. Is our vastu idam sarvam? Ya chara. Hmm. Is our vastu idam sarvam? That means all these are Krishna's. Then son, all these are the manifestation of the Krishna's energy. Krishna is energetic, eh? Shakti Ma, and that energies, and Jiva is also one of the energies. They say, they say that Jiva and Bhagwan are one, are same, but that is not a fact. Jiva and Bhagwan are not same. Jiva are energies, whereas Bhagavan is energetic, you understand, and energetic controls the energies. Our energies act under the guidance or control of energetic Bhagavan. Hmm. So therefore, jivas are not Bhagavan; they are subordinate Bhagavan or inferior. Hmm. 
So they are controlled by the Supreme Personality of God. Now what are the difference between the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Jeevas given here? You understand? Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Controller, whereas the Jeevas are controlled. This is the main difference, chief difference. And there are other differences. Who? Oh, Supreme Personality of Godhead is Bhiva, the Supreme Law, but it's great, Mahan. There are Jeevas are only minor. This is different. Uh, and Supreme Law provides the needs of the Jeevas. You understand? And Jeevas enjoy it. Mm. And Jeevas' constitutional position is they are eternally servants of the Lord. And by the abuse of material, I can say they are minute independence, they are under material nature. You understand? They are under material nature. In other words, they are conditioned by material nature. And they need to be liberated, be free from that bondage. How can they be free from the bondage? All Shastras say, here it is also said, Mame Gude Prabhupadyanti Maya Mitam Toranditi. If they can surrender unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, who is the master of Maya, illusory energy, Maya, Abhiso, then they can be liberated. They can conquer Maya, overcome the influence of Maya, then free from the influence of Maya. No other way is there. Mm-hmm. When they will surrender, to the Supreme Lord, they will become the devotees of the Supreme Lord. And the Supreme Lord will give them everything. Do you understand? They are not controllers. They are controlled. But when they surrender and to the Supreme Lord, they become his devotees. The Supreme Lord gives them everything. Shastra says that Supreme Lord makes them greater than He. You understand? Thereby they will become controlled as the Supreme Lord is controlled. Otherwise they cannot become controlled. They are eternally controlled. That is true. And this material creation, the material world, it is material world. And consumption elements, you see. Adhunyara, Pohanara, Bhai, Hammana, Buddhireva, Bhai, Plus, Pri, Sapra. The material elements. And this material world is now active. How is it? Because of this jivas. Jivas may have made this material active. Or otherwise, would not have been active. That is stated in this verse. Hmm? But one important thing is there, the jivas should understand when they will get human form of life, they are in superior consciousness. You understand? The consciousness is superior. Hmm? in comparison to the consciousness of other living entities. You understand? So, this, at that stage, in that species of life, that means in human species of life, they should understand this uh, teachings of Lord. He has given in Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad Gita. You understand? And they can be taught 
and thereby they can understand that they are eternally servant of the Lord. And Krishna, supreme personality of Godhead, of one Krishna, is supreme Lord. You understand? And everything belongs to Him. And whatever Jeeva has, it is Krishna's. Out of mercy, Krishna is giving them uh, the utilization of His service. And human beings can do it. They can not understand this plus of the design and they can do it. Others, living entities, cannot do it. So, when by evolutionary process they will be human beings, then they can understand this. And when they come to this path of surrender or devotional service, they will be liberated from the clutches of Maya. Otherwise, they cannot be liberated. They will be always under the influence of Maya, bondage. And rotating here, in this material world, in different species of life. Even non-living and living soul. Ah! soul. Nonsense. <laughs> the soul is our conscious. It is not conscious, isn't it? But what is the difference between living and non-living? Don't you know? Yeah, I know, but I don't know what answer you're looking for. <laughs> living as independence, non-living as no independence. Independence is the difference. You understand? You are living entity. It's a loving, non-living matter. You understand? You have independence. You can go from this place to that place if you will so. But it cannot go. You understand? What about a non-moving living entity has no independence? You know, no, no, no. They are living entities. You understand? Power, jungle. Power means the trees, mountains. You understand? But mountains previously had wings. They were had flying, you see. But Indra Dev cut off their wings from there. Now placed in one place. You understand? But there, is, there are changes. Some mountains, once inside the sea, and now they have come out. And those who come out now, they will come, they will be inundated in what? You understand? And trees also, they grow, the branches spread. <coughs> you understand? That is symptom of this uh, that they are living and not non living. You understand? But trees are, they are living. Trees are living, but they don't have independent to move. Trees. Trees. There are certain trees, they are moving also. <laughs> there are certain trees, it's shallow also. You understand? Certain. Mm-hmm. The shallow. You understand? Mm. In medical, in the material science have proved that thing. You understand? Huh? They can eat more yeah. insects. Yeah. Huh? The leaves or flowers will close up. They will digest it. You understand? Yeah. This is proof that yeah. they are living in people. Yeah. You understand? Mm. Though they are in one place, still by squeezing, that the branches are squeezed, thereby they can, from this place, they go to that place. You understand? And you might have seen a big banyan tree, hmm? a very big banyan tree, and 
from that big tree, from the branches, some root-like things come up and process the ground. Therefore, they support the big tree. How can they do it? If they must not live. Even as the son supports the father, old father, so they support the big banyan, then send they do the son's duty. Like that. Tell me. And middle science are already proved, has already proved this, that they are living. And, and Sastra also says that. A beautiful life, species of life. So, among them, they also come. Hmm? Then say. As a beautiful life, they come and they have a lack of species of life. You understand? They are not dead matter. They are not dead. And this is the difference between living and non living. This independence is the difference. You understand? And the Supreme Lord Krishna, out of mercy, has given this independence, karunaya dhatta. You understand? Otherwise, the living could have been non-living, garbage. Yes, yes. Ah, it's just a Oh, okay. Well, the living entity has independence, whereas non-living might have independence. But when the living entity by process of the same, what do you say? No? Evolution? Evolving? Is that in theory? No, no, evolution consists. Yeah, process of evolution. See? Becomes human being. So he can make the either abuse or proper use of that independence. You understand? And he makes abuse of the independence, he comes from the grip of Maya. And he makes the proper use of his independence, he becomes devotee. He always in his constitutional position. Uh-huh. You understand? And that is the real position. Hmm? Hmm? And this teaching is given to human beings to make proper use of your independence. Don't abuse it. If you make the proper use, then you will free from the process of Maya and you will be liberated. You understand? Why are you in bondage? You are superior energy. You are not inferior. Maya is inferior energy. Why are you under inferior energy? You are superior. So be in your constitutional position. You will be liberated. That is indicated. You understand? And this Padhinata, this independence is most important. It is the life, the valuable wealth, very valuable wealth the Lord has given you. You understand? And you should know how to utilize it properly. Properly. You understand? Then you get the highest benefit. And that is taught here. One question is that, give an example of a cow dung. Oh. The question is like that, example of cow dung. Yes. Veda vakya pavitra hoi, sankha gomvaya. Jivar vishtha asti, abu vishtha, kintu sankha gomvaya, gomvaya sankha. The soul, the soul of the living entity and bones. Let's go. 
are considered to be impure things. But the cow dung, though it is true, and bone, the concept of it is bone, of faith, living in giddy, still they are considered pure. Because Vedas have said so. Vedavakya Pavitra. Why do you know Veda is not true? What Veda says, accept it. Your mother says, this text is your father. Why? No, no question why. Mother is the authority to speak about father, bona fide authority. Whatever she says, you accept it. Without any question, why, how? No. So, Veda mother, Veda mother. You understand? Veda is like mother. And Veda is the authority to speak about Supreme Father. You understand? Supreme Father, Supreme Father, Krishna. Whatever Veda says, I'll accept it. No, why, how? You understand? Accept the authority. You understand? Yes. Can I ask you a question about the yogi and the personalist? Ah. About the yogi merging into Shri Bhaktivedanta Vishnu. Oh, Mahatma. Yes. Yeah. How are you explaining that um, the yogi is higher than, than the jnani? Yeah. The jnani merges into the Brahma Jyoti and the yogi merges into, at least he has some conception of the person. Yeah. Yogi means here, Bhagavan Krishna tells about Bhakti Yogi. Yeah. Next verse clears, clearly said. Previous eh? verse says, Tasmat Yogi Bhavarjuna. Then next verse says, Yogi Nanga Pi Sarveshan Madhvatiyena Dharatmana. Sadhavana Bhavati Jaman Sarmeja Kutta. That next verse clears. Uh, yes, so there are many types of yogis, but out of them, Bhakti Yogi is the best. Thus bhajan is part of hate and love. You understand? That is clear. But what is your question? I mean, try to understand how is it that a yogi is higher than a jnani, but the, the Paramatma realized yogi, hmm. because you can judge something by the goal. Ah, yogi means they are bhakti yogi. I said that. Not other types of yogis. Vasma yogi bhava, therefore you become yogi. What type of yogi? Next verse, bhakti yogi. Yes. Do you understand? Jnani also is a yogi, is known as jnana yogi. Karmi also known as yogi, is karma yogi. Do you understand? When was meditating? On, on Paramatma? Yes, dhana yogi. Is dhana yogi? Yes. Yes. Karma yogi, jnana yogi, dhana yogi. Pranam yogi, so many yogis. Why is jnana yogi higher than jnana yogi? Jnana and jnana yogi same. You understand? Same. Well, one is realizing Paramatma, and one is realizing the impersonal Brahman intelligence. Yeah. And you realize Paramatma is superior. Then one who realizes Brahman. Because Brahman is impersonal, Whereas Paramatma is personal. This personal realization, therefore superior. So you're saying that the Paramatma realized yogi, he merges into... Jnana. If he wants to march, what while is, I commit mistake. What is his goal? What is the goal? You see, he should do, determine it's his goal. He should understand what is my goal. Jesus. His goal, the real goal, is to serve Paramatma. To serve Paramatma, he is servant. But if he cannot understand this, he cannot inquire about it, and by abusing his intelligence, I mean, say, independence, minute independence, if he wants to merge into Paramatma, thereby he commits blunder. Then understand? It is the abuse of independence. Uh, realized persons, they cannot distinguish between jiva soul 
and Shibuchol, I think it's one. Am I correct? No. Jiva Soul and Shibu Soul thinking on their gyanis, their gyanis, my bodies, in personalities. You understand? But uh, those who realize Paramatma, they are not of that category. You understand? They are superior, they are knightly. But they should inquire further. What is my relationship with Paramatma? They should inquire that. So, I am not Paramatma, I am Jivatma. They know it. And Paramatma is greater than I. You understand? He is Supra, he is Lord. I am not Lord. You understand? The Supreme Lord, Paramatma. Super soul in all living entities. And so. You understand? And what is the relationship? So then care about it and understand it. And keep up that relationship by serving you. Then he will come to the category of bhakta, devotee. You understand? So uh, their goal is they're not very clear about what is the purpose. They're just like in, covered, up, covered over by Maya. Yes, they will, they, they will be covered up by Maya <coughs> if they misuse their independence. <laughs> that is this only answer, you see. If they misuse their independence, they will be covered up by Maya. You understand? Though they realize Paramatma, and they cannot understand why I am his eternal servant to serve him, then they will abuse their independence again, be cut off by Maya, and forget that you also. You understand? Yes. You were saying that they desire to merge into. If they desire, they desire. because they have independence of desire. So uh, they abuse it. Abuse of independence, then they will desire to march. Otherwise, why would they? Why would they desire to march? Not all. All yogis, those who realize Paramatma, desire to merge into Paramatma. Some of them may be devotees, they will further inquire and they will become, and will become devotees to serve Paramatma. You understand? Not all. What, what happens if they merge into Paramatma? That's why they commit to great blunder. For the time of dissolution, when, when Mahavishnu is inhaling and everything is unmanifested, what happens to these living entities? Chir Daksha Vishnu? They, they, they enter into Mahatattva, and Mahatattva enters into the body of Mahavishnu. When next creation will be there, again they will come out as they were. From the body of the Mahatattva will come, and the Mahatattva they will come out. So they stay in Chir Daksha Vishnu's body? No, they merge, they merge into the body of Garbhodra uh, Sahib uh, Yes. You understand? Yeah. I thought it's here that said this is a, is a super soul. Super soul? Sahib Vishnu is super soul of all living entities. Garbhodra Sahib is the super soul of the universe. You understand? He enters into every universe. So they, they never can get out of that situation? Huh? They never can come out, they, they have to stay there? They will come out again when the next creation will be. That chance will be given. You understand? But this life finished, checked up everything. You understand? In the next creation, then the annihilation will be there, all will march, and when the next creation Krishna wills to, our next creation that I will create, then three Purusha Bhattaras come up, eh? and they will come, come out. 
living entities come out? Yes. Out where? From the body. Ask that what the right is, you know? You understand? You understand? Yes. Where do they go? Where do the living entity go from there? They were lying there during the period of all annihilation in the body of Vishnu. You understand? Yes. Again they will be given chance, they will again come out when the next creation is there. Then Brahma will create the different varieties. Hmm? Varieties of manifestation. You understand? Therefore, those who desire to merge into Paramatma, they are worse than those who merge into Brahma. Because they will fall down from that position, Brahman, again into this material existence, do you understand? Arya Kutsena Param Padam Tata Padanti Or. They will again go to the different species of life, rotate. And when they will again of the human form of life, then they, they are again given chance. You understand? But those who merge into the body of Paramatma, they have no such chance. You understand? Till next creation. You understand? But this living entity have chance during this creation. This is difference. You understand? That one who realizes Paramatma should be intelligent enough to inquire further. That is my relationship with Paramatma. You understand? This inquiry about his relationship. He should accept proper guru. You understand? And then by his inquiry about it. And when he learn that he is eternal servant of, eternal part of Paramatma and eternal servant of Paramatma, then he will be engaged in devotional service. You understand? Yes? I'm just really trying to understand, like I understand what you're saying, mm. that they may eventually come to devotional service or they may desire to merge. Mm. But what do the majority of these people what are they thinking as they go? They, they have realized Paramatma, but what is, what is their mentality about after they leave their body? What are they thinking? You see, very few, most of them will further inquire and become devotees, serve Paramatma. And very few abuse their independence and merge into the body of Paramatma. There are very few. And they are very, very unfortunate. You understand? Very, very unfortunate. But those, the others are fortunate. Brahma, Nahami, Tekun, Bhagyavan, Jiva, Guru, Krishna, Krupa, Pai, because they come to the path of devotion by serving Brahma. You understand? Clear? <laughs> this is this. One question of abuse and proper use of independence. And you are independent to think, to desire. Either you merge or you serve. You have that independence. Do you understand? If you serve, then you have made the proper use of your independence. If you merge, that why you abuse your independence. Do you understand? Yes. And that is your independence. Either of the two you must do. Do you understand? Yes. And the independence, independent thinking, independence of thought is there. Do you understand? All right? 
What are the six kinds of aggressors who are fit to be killed? Fit to be killed? Why do you ask that question? Agnita Gradasa Iva Sastra Pani Nanapaha Khetra Dara Pahari Cha Sadeke Atatai Six Agnita who sets fire Gradasa who gives poison Sastra Pani who has weapons and unnecessarily kills Sastra Pani Agnita Gradasa Sastra Pani Nanapaha who is a plunder the wealth of others Dakaas, Anapaha, Agnita Gada Sarasastrapani, Anapaha, Khetra Dara Pahal, so he doesn't take off the landed property of others and kidnap the wives of others. Dara Pahal, this six. They should be killed immediately. Because of Arakhis? Chile, I'm not a good topic at the same set of This verse is cost. I am going away. So don't want to marry a lot of time. Go for existence. Serious struggle for existence. You won't come wrong. Be wrong. Struggle for existence. Gita says. The fighting with the neutral nature, the struggling with the neutral nature for existence. Mana, Sasthani Indriyani, Pratistan, Prakshati, that was his there also. How? I asked them, could you ask? Or they understand that? Using like the head. The food will be enough. They are properly digested, they are vomiting, from all the vomiting, are in digestion and stool. What is the benefit of eating? We are not properly digested. Similarly, this highest philosophy, very, very high philosophy, is given that one must digest it. Digestion must be there. So you will be benefited. If not, what is the benefit? Just entering into this year and passing out with that. It is either vomiting or passing school by this year. Yes. You understand? This is very high philosophy. You must have keep up there. This verse speaks of very, very high philosophy. Most of them cannot understand. I test them, they cannot understand. What is the benefit? You are speaking something more and more and more you are speaking. I just said, don't speak so much. Speak a little and let them digest it. Don't speak so much. How come they don't understand? How come they don't understand? You see, it's not an easy thing to understand it. It's a difficult task. Sakti Tattva means difficult thought. You understand? One can understand it if he is very eager to understand. If there is no eagerness, how can you understand? Thus, always means superfluously. Sitting here, and posing as if listening, but he is not listening. The thing is not entering into his ear. You understand? I picked up that story you were, you were saying about again become a mouse, but yes. I couldn't understand the context of why you were bringing that up. I told that story because Bhagavan has given you opportunity that you are born as a human being, your consciousness, superior consciousness, and your duty is to inquire jīgyāṣā, apo jīgyāṣā. You should accept a puna fide spiritual master and inquire there. If you want to, then Krishna is there inside in the heart, Krishna is outside, within and without. 
is seized with everything, then he will say, all right, I, I have given you opportunity, but you have not hmm, taken any benefit out of it. You understand? You have abused it. So, like an animal, you, you have you had only run after these four things, eating, sleeping, eating, and defending, and you are not inquired about the purpose. You understand? So again become animal, again become mouse. <laughs> you understand? That's what I told us. So, you understand? That's why I encourage them to be attentive when this is taught, being taught. <coughs> we give the teaching, so be very, very attentive and try to understand it. If someone cannot understand, so look down and ask questions. We are there to explain everything and make him understand why I am not doing that and what is the benefit. That I have said. You understand? So many. They are only sitting here. <laughs> Don't you see? <laughs> Not to listen to anything. Let them move them. Let them move Out of sixteen, nine, they are losing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the benefit? That's why I said that. Be very, very careful and attend and try to understand. It's very high philosophy, spiritual knowledge in that material. And if you cannot understand, note it down. And as soon as this pravachan is over, then ask question. We also say, if somebody has any question, let him ask. We also say, give the opportunity. But so nobody asks any question, as if they understand, but they don't understand anything. <laughs> they understand? <laughs> That's why I say this thing. How? Allah, you have to go. Nivam, eh? Gali ki sab sattana hava, sab gita klas kvasiva. Eya sunja ne sade, dekhya ki podiya. जे सोयो छात लागी हो पाप ताकि खूब प्रहार दिया जाए क्या कुछ सोयो दिया जाए खाना पीना खाई के सोई पड़ी हो से पाप ने सो गीता क्लास का सिवो सब भाव के सुनो आओ जब बुझना पारी हो से प्रश्न पता रिबो बुझी हो हाँ 